at least the tour guide she's done the food um, bush, bush food experience bush food experience tour and, and um, also the garden walk which yes. we just came on and i've learned a lot from her thank you natalie no, you're very nice welcome to meet you. nice to meet you yeah. to retain as much moisture as they can so that's why you don't really get much smells from some of the plants that you see here because well moisture is needed for them to give scent so they're not going to give it away willy nilly they're going to try and retain it as much as can i try it oh no these ones have been dried up for a few years now you okay. probably wouldn't taste that normally at the base of an illy tree there's a semi-permanent water hole our uh, previous colleague leroy said that you could drink that spring dry in some of the areas drink that spring dry and watch it fill up before your eyes mm. So there may not have been a spring there from Okay, but all we're trying to do is make a sound. But you squeeze really hard and what we get is <coughs> sounds coming through. It sounds like the toilet down the back. There's a long way down there to even hearing this, okay? But that's what it's sounding like. You don't want to be squeezing too hard. You just want to relax. Like so very simple to So when I go and do it, I'm taking that breath. <laughs> You're humming the sound, like a singer. Look, the best way of explaining it, that is your money here. That's your money here, your voice. You've got to look after it. So if you take up singing, if you take up digi, take up singing lessons as well. Okay, what do they do? They sit beside the piano and go through the scales. So if you have heard the piano, all right, and you hear this is the key of F, there in keys of D and B, you're going to hum the sound of F. So you're going to hum the word through this. So it might all go together. You need to know how to breathe. I'm doing dirt, dirt, dirt. I'm just mucking around with it. Okay, just mucking around with other little words and letters in there. the ruby salt bush but this is the old man salt bush mm. so you can see those white speckles on there yeah. it's actually salt building up now they're normally found around salt lakes mm -hmm. the salt crystals that are on the leaves will actually be a bit more abundant when they're around yeah. the salt lakes now um, not really a food source yeah. but more or less a large growing shrub that yeah. if the men when they go hunting they walk past and they hear some rustling underneath well, yeah. dinner could be underneath mm. there so what the hunters will do is if they hear some rustling underneath the old man salt bush one of them will wait over one side, yeah. they'll create a little fire. Yeah. Get that smoke kicking up. Mm. So whatever animals in there will think, oh, a fire's coming. So mm. they're gonna dart out in the opposite direction yeah. of the fire. Mm. So that's when the other hunters will be waiting over the other side, hit it on the head and take it home. Mm -hmm. So it could be kuwana, could be uh, like, you know, birds yeah. underneath there. So they got the busted turkey, which is quite a large bird. But yes, the salt crystals also, when you're traveling around Australia, these salt crystals, when they're um, around the salt lakes, because they're um, a lot more, what will happen is if you uh, break down, 
yeah. the salt crystals will mm. actually reflect light like high vis. Mm -hmm. So if you recognise the old man salt yeah. bush and you're stuck somewhere in the middle of Australia and you yeah. come across it, yeah. well, that'll be good to wave down oncoming mm. traffic. But they are incorporating it into supermarkets mm. these days. Somebody was telling me that they belong to the um, pea family. That's why the ones inside yeah. are quite edible. Well, I believe I did, well they're acacia, so actually I'm not too sure, but it, it is possible because it does look like a sea, uh, like a pea pod. Yeah, it does. And then yeah. you can see all not really with uh, if we only had a little bit of sunlight, but you can, oh with that one, so you can see how small the hardwood seeds are inside yeah. the pod. Mm. Mm. Then also below it, you can see the ruby salt bush, which I also spit. Mm. A lot of people describe it as similar to pomegranate, but yeah, so you can kind of see the little yeah. flower right there. Yeah. Been ready to eat. Thank you, Nat. No, that's all right. Do you want to share? I'm glad. No, you can have that one. <laughs> I've already tried, had my try. <laughs> so what's, it, what, what's this one called? It's called... It's um, called the Anuli. Anuli. So the bush plant. Anuli. Mm. So yummy actually. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So you want to go when it's that color. Yeah. If yeah. you go too soon, then that's when you get that bit. But you do want to be careful when you're picking the fish because they have a symbiotic relationship with the wasp out here. Mm -hmm. So the flower, male and female, is located inside the fruit. Yeah. So the wasp comes along, pollinates the flower, but mm. also lays its larvae inside. Yeah, yeah. So when you're picking the fruit, you want to look for little black spots. Yeah, because yeah. Because it does dry out the fruit. Yeah, yeah uh, so boomerang the wood. Yeah. yeah. So the What's it called? The number seven boomerang, which yeah. is the kali. Yeah. They make it out of the mulga wood. The ladies use mm. a digging stick to dig up mm. for food, so mm. that's what they use the mulga wood for. Mm. Now, if you come over this way, I explained to you before about the lerp, the insect uh, that lives yeah. on the mulga tree. So it eats the mulga sap and excretes out a sweet honeydew. Yeah. This is the dried version of that honeydew, so mm. it's already been harvested by oh, those honey yeah. ants yeah. and taken down to their nest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can see sometimes uh, when they're fresh, you want to mm. look for them glistening in the sun because then that's when it's like the fresh honeydew. So yeah. children will actually come and start eating it. Yeah. yeah. You Very look really good awesome. on camera, by the way. Oh, yeah, you're such you. a natural. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is what years and years of uh, tourist tourism, yes. tourism does yeah. say. Uh, you should I've be on TV. A, well, I've done a couple of ads <laughs> oh, for yeah. Tourism Australia. Yeah. The water from below us. Mm -hmm. It goes to our water treatment plant, they yeah. pump it up, goes through the reverse osmosis process and yeah. then comes through to our taps. Yeah. So if you're worried about the water, it's definitely drinkable, very, yeah. very good for you. But yeah, you because this is um, desert basically, so there's an oasis um, yeah, yeah, yeah. underneath there. Uh, yeah. So um, those ones that look like Christmas treats, yeah. they are the juvenile stage of the desert oak. So mm. they haven't quite established the branches like the large one just over there. Yeah. So what they're doing is their foliage is running along their trunks mm. to maximize rain catchment when it does come through. Because what they're doing is they're spending all their time and effort not um, producing branches, mm. but drilling a taproot down to that June yeah. plains aquifer. Yeah. 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 Once they establish that taproot and they got that constant water source, mm. that's when they'll start to branch out like the big yeah. mother. Um, desert oak <laughs> and then you know yeah. where the water is lying so you can see that all throughout this area yeah. this is where the water is lying mm -hmm. because those desert oaks would not be trying to uh, yeah. drill that taproot there yeah and when you're out at the national park you'll also notice mm. where the desert oaks are lying and yeah. where they're not mm. so you know um, where the water is you mm. just need to find the areas in which they how pull deep up. are they oh they can drill that taproot from 20 to 50 meters deep mm. yeah so some of the um, older desert oaks can be thousands and thousands mm. of years old. We mm. don't know because we'd have to cut them down to find yeah. out, but nobody mm. wants to do that. <laughs> yeah. We'll go a bit further on. Explained, the yeah. crimson chat is the bird that comes along and eats the berries. Yeah. If you have a look up here, you can actually see those red berries forming. Oh, yeah. yeah. But by the way, how, what happened to them? Why are there different growths? Uh, because there's four different kinds of mistletoe out here. Mm. So these are just the different varieties. This would actually be a better example, so you can see how many berries are on this one. So as I said, the crimson chat, he comes along, he eats these berries. Mm. Now sticks to his bottom tail feathers when he comes out. So when he goes to the toilet later on, mm. 
Ugh, can't shake it loose. Yeah. <laughs> so, oh, that one went loose. But he wipes his bottom on the branches of trees. So, just here. That is the point in which the bird would have wiped his bottom and that's how it's able oh, to propagate yeah. itself and grow. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But the men have use for the harlequin mistletoe berries, mm. which is more these leaves right here. So this is the harlequin mistletoe. Mm. When the berries form on this one, mm. the men, when they go on hunting trips and mm. they're feeling a bit peckish, but they know they got to go a bit further before they get any food. When they find the harlequin mistletoe, they'll eat a couple of those berries yeah. and it suppresses their appetite mm. so that they can go a bit further. Mm. So nature's diet berry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But and, and the tree um, itself belongs to the acacia family, do you yes, say? Yes, yes. So the mulga tree is acacia and nura. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So over 800 different species of acacia here in mm. Australia. This and is... it's, I think, the same amount in South Africa. Yeah. Mm. yeah. This is the most interesting tree I've seen so yeah, far. Because it really, yeah. you can see yeah. all those different types yeah. of trees. Yeah, yeah. Now, when trees do become overgrown with the mistletoe, it, they can essentially kill their host plant. Oh, ah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because so they're more or less taking the mm. nutrients out of that plant. They look like different, like um, one, two, three. Three, three hair, yeah. three different growths. So, this would actually be a better example. So, you can see that the mistletoe here. Yeah. So that's where the bird wiped his bottom, and you mm. can see how they're yeah. basically grafting themselves to a tree. Yeah, yeah. It's very interesting. But I've got one of the last plants that I'd like to talk to you about, and there are two little tufts of grasses down here. But this is the native lemongrass. Mm -hmm. Now, this is one of uh, the medicinal plants in which the, uh, they would actually ingest. Majority of the other medicinal plants that they would use. They would uh, grind yeah. it up to release the oils yeah. and then mix it in with animal fat to create a cream. But this one here, this is the native lemongrass, so you go after the green one. As I said, a lot of plants out here don't like to give away their smell yeah. because that requires moisture. Mm. So crush that up in between, just rub it in between your fingers if you're not getting much of a smell. It looks like spinifex. Yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can smell it. Yeah. It smells so like normally, lemongrass. Yeah, it is. So this is the native lemongrass. Normally growing around um, water courses. Yeah. So that's where they can um, give off a bit more smell. Mm. But during times of song and ceremony, sometimes uh, you can be singing to all hours of the night. Mm. So the ladies, what they do is they'll gather large quantities of the native mm. lemongrass, mm -hmm. crush it up and mix it in with water. Yeah. So it creates a nice soothing drink for your throat. Mm. Yeah. Must be good with um, soup as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, my colleague uh, Leroy, he makes a lemon curry rabbit stew yeah. using this lemongrass. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's quite um, intense and yeah. smelly. Hey, it's mm. good. But you also mentioned yeah. the spinifex grass. Yeah. Now, the spinifex grass is quite essential out here for yeah. many different reasons. One, mm. it's the reason why we don't have those rolling sand dunes like mm. the Sahara Desert. So the spinifex grass, they have extensive mm. root systems, mm. sometimes going down three meters yeah. deep. So they're essentially holding our sand mm. dunes in place. Mm. There have been, and there are sand dunes mm. out here that haven't moved for the past 35,000 years. Mm. Yeah. So the spinifex grass, to retain as much moisture as they can, they curve their leaves up yeah. and form a very, very tight cone. So mm. if you do fall in it, you're going to come away quite itchy. Mm. But it's not because of that cone, it's because yeah. it's coated in a fine black silica uh, powder. Yeah. So the Ananu ladies actually yeah. extract that powder by yeah. beating it against a rock or nowadays mm. a tar. Mm. And um, it brings out that powder. What they do is they heat up a stick with a fire, just yeah. the end of it, mm. until it's nice and hot. Roll it in that powder and then yeah. repeat that process. Mm. Heat it up, roll it in that powder. Mm. Heat it up, roll it in that powder. So it forms a tar-like substance and yeah. they call it kitty. Yeah. So it's the strongest form of super glue known to man. Mm. So men, when they go on hunting trips, mm. you'll also find on either on the end of one of their equipment or they got yeah. a stick with a ball mm. of kitty on the end. So that's for those quick fixes along the way. Mm. So if they throw their boomerang and it hits a tree, mm. snaps in half, mm. well, they just need to make a little fire, reheat that kitty, makes mm. it pliable again, and they can attach the yeah. equipment back yeah. together. Yeah. So it hardens like cement. By the way, are these um, natural growth or... Um, these ones were planted here. They're planted yeah, here. because they're normally found around watercourses. Yeah. yeah. So they do have to, as you can see, the irrigation line, they do have uh, yeah. to feed it with yeah. water a lot. 
But yes, and then the pop mm. of colour, the sturt desert peas, so yeah. they're quite nice. Mm. But yeah, that's the last plant that I have yes. to talk to you about. Well, anyway, thank you so much, You're um, very Natalie. Welcome. Natalie You're very um, is the tour guide. <laughs> She's done. Um, Natalie is the tour guide. She's done the food um, bush, bush food experience, bush food experience tour, and, and um, also the garden walk, which yes. we just came on. And I've learned a lot from her. Thank you, Natalie. No, you're very nice welcome. To you. Nice to meet you. Yeah. Hopefully, I'll see you yeah. around before you go. Yes, best of luck with All everything. All right, good luck with Katajuda tomorrow. Thank you. All right, have a good one. You too.